continue from where we left off give them as many choices about what to do as possible so that is the area that we will continue from at the moment um, because the previous video we spoke about no sibling comparison it's very dangerous to start comparing siblings with their strengths and interests with what they do best you don't have to celebrate their differences celebrate their um, comparisons celebrate their differences so that they will have the confidence to be individuals as they are so let's carry on from <clears throat> that Give them as many choices as they would want to do. So as I read on, let's pick on the points. Do you want children to help around the house? That's the number one question. Use it as an opportunity to discover their preferences and let them choose among the jobs you have for them to do. Do you want them to participate in school activities? That's another question. I encourage them to choose between a variety of things to do and support their choices, even if they aren't what you would have picked. So it's not about you as a parent. It's not about you as a teacher. It's about that individual. So maybe you would have picked a different activity or a different task as to what they picked because that's their preference allow them to carry on so that they can develop their powers so encourage them to choose between a variety of things to do and support their choices if they aren't what you would have picked as i always as i said earlier you can even do a list of chores to participate in the house you can tap some of their interests and strengths here. Some children love cooking, some love washing, utensils, tidying up, and arranging dining area, kitchen area, lounge and garden. There are many more to learn and observe that. Observe about your children. If you delegate supervised chores that are age specific the unique discoveries about your golden and special child will amaze you so age appropriate give them the tasks that are appropriate to their age and leave them to carry on and see what they can do in that way they'll be developing their own areas and you you notice their preference and you can even observe and know what they do best if it's utensils, washing up, if it's tidying up, if it's gardening, if it's cooking, you will know when you leave it for them to pick what they want. Discovery strengths happens through a process of self-reflection. All the above tips will help children develop positive and creative thoughts that will help them decide what their true passions are in life so it's good to leave them let them carry on with what they do best get your strength journal and make your notes in fact the strengths journal will allow you to put in the questions that we've talked about and to put in all these answers and then you study their interests and strengths so with that, you can be able to know and notice their area of 
strength, their area of interest, their area of preference. And then discovering strength happens through a process of self-reflection as well. So you also allow them to have time for themselves so that they reflect in whatever they do. Teach them how to do their reflections so that they will develop their strengths. They will pick on their weak ones or their weaknesses and sort of nurture them to become strengths. Sometimes to they develop on their strengths to enhance it rather. So depending on whatever a parent decides, please don't do sibling comparison number one give them a variety of chores to pick from let them have their preferences so that you can pick on the good ones that they are or the, the ones that they are good in and then give them the opportunity to self-reflect so that they enhance their uniqueness so the next point is developing your child's potential here are some tips to help bring out your child's interest. So we're going to be looking at these tips. And let's, you know, put down these tips so that it's going to help us in our parenting skills. Number one, provide a variety of stimuli and experiences geared to your children's interests. So you provide a variety of stimuli so that you can pick on those ones that they are geared towards. Number two, encourage your child to tell you their ideas while you play secretary by writing them down. So it's going to be interesting. You're asking questions and you're writing as if they are in a, in a hospital environment or they are in, a, in an office environment where secretaries are um, putting down notes or um, journalists are writing down interview notes. When they ask you the question, they write it down because they are going to develop that either into a magazine or into an editorial piece. So it's a very good tip to take note of. Number three, Permit plenty of time for thinking and daydreaming. That is another good one. That's where the self-reflection comes in. So that they will have plenty of time to be thinking and reminiscing about the past and what they did wrong and how they're going to improve on that and all that. Encourage your children to translate their interests into stories pictures, collections, and inventions, inventions. So if you encourage them to translate their interests into stories, you might be surprised that one of your child will write a book and publish it at the end of the day. So these are some of the areas that we need to encourage our children to um, focus so that it's going to be a very good thing for them to develop their potential. Number five, accept and use their tendencies to see differently, to see things differently. So you accept and use their tendencies to see things differently. So that's what we are talking about comparison. Don't compare them, just celebrate their uniqueness. Let them do what they are individually good at and then you can be able to see and acknowledge what they do differently. Number six, do not be anxious about single-mindedness. Ask your child as many questions as they ask you. So you go on, ask more questions and get more answers. It's a dialogue. Get more answers from your child. Number seven, ask their teacher to allow your child to move through the curriculum at a pace that accommodates their knowledge level. That is a bit of a tight corner because if a curriculum is moving at a, a particular pace and the child is not 
abreast with that, then it means you have to find um, an extra tuition because they might not be able to accommodate that child. That is a very tricky one. So you can obviously um, ask your child and then you know communicate with the teachers to know how best your child is fitting into that curriculum. If they are running late into that curriculum or if they are sort of um, not doing well and then lacking behind, then you guys will decide on how best you can help that child. So let's come back and hit on that point because it's a very, very um, tricky one.